good people of the channel. I hear that something has arrived from China five days ahead of schedule, in fact, so well done, FedEx. I think Bernard's mold in there can hear me arriving and so prepare its day of obstinate mischief. This series is the story of the new amphibious Arctic vehicle project named Bernard. Building on ideas, skills and questions raised during the Allen lifeboat conversion, as a team we will share all those moments needed to get Bernard up north, onto the ice and making himself useful. The yard team have been superstars and diverted FedEx from the main reception to outside our humble headquarters at the fun end of the yard. It's always slightly galling when you have to pay volumetric weight rates for freight, but it really wouldn't be feasible to ship this in a less robust or smaller box. But, months after first starting those Google Translate conversations with the swathe of Chinese custom gear motor people, the handful I chose as the most transparent communicators and technically literate built us an actual prototype. So we have a motor from Volcano Motors, and it's mounted on a gearbox from Victory Machinery. There's a controller too in the box, but let's see that in a moment. Very carefully packed and padded too. Those grey bags are full of two-part expanding foam. Not a bad way for it to fit around all the weird shapes of what it's there to protect. I wanted to check nothing had gone awry from Ningbo via Shanghai, the Netherlands, France, the Channel Tunnel, to here beside the Thames Estuary. Cables look good, and no obvious bashing or chips. There had been some conversation about the coupling and four-point bolts, so I was pleased to see that looking robust. A tiny bit of surface rust on the flange where the paint looks thin, and the output shaft protector is fine too. The gearbox is heavier than the motor, and together we're talking about half the weight of a well-fed person. Not too heavy to lift, but awkward to get a grip on, so I brought out some of Alan's old ropes and they came to the rescue. I know lightweight is the name of the game in the build of Bernard, but having investigated aluminium or even composite housings, I'm assured that unless you have an unlimited budget, these are the route to reliability. I was also grateful to catch up on the local Chinese news from six years ago. Anyway, safely unpacked, and now we can talk more about the unit itself. People of the channel, greetings. Uh, it's going to be a fairly brief one today because I've been editing an episode for a partner of the channel. It will be probably a, a, a one-off. It's a, sort of a review. Uh, I'll give you a bit of a hint. It involves lithium batteries. Uh, but I'm going to give you um, a bit of a sense of what I've just unboxed. As you can see, this is what my social life now looks like. I'm laying down in a boatyard with about 40, 42 kilos of motor and gearbox, which I think is quite a fun time. Over here is a uh, controller which should be able to take um, 48 volts from a battery and turn it into the exciting AC juice that powers uh, the motor over here. Uh, I'll do a few little cutaways to show you the details of the two main components, but I've had these custom made for me in China and I went from company to company because some of them were a bit, a little bit cagey about details. Some, some of them just gave off a, you know, a sense that I may, may, may not be able to trust them. Um, but then I happened to, upon a couple of companies, one that made this and then one that made this. And then in fact, the manufacturer of the motor asked for the manufacturer of the gearbox to be sent to them so that they could check the fit and the mesh. And that really gave me a sense of encouragement and were even able to source the controller for me for a really good price. Uh, just seemed to be on the right, uh, the right wavelength. And so, uh, yes, the plan was to basically come up with a custom plan for the correct power and voltage of motor. We've gone for uh, 4,500 watts, four and a half kilowatts, and at 48 volts, because I think that 48 volts is a really good halfway house between low voltage and getting up towards dangerous DC voltages. And um, this gearbox here, of course, is, well, I say of course, it's just over 17 to one ratio, which I've calculated along with the wheel diameters for the Bernard vehicle will give us about the right top speed and therefore as much torque as we can possibly manage at slower speeds. Uh, the torque rating of this is, I think it's something like, I forget, I think just over 28 Newton meters at the motor end, but that then of course is multiplied up by the gearbox. And then if you multiply that by four, or I'm hoping for maybe six motors, gear motors, then you're gonna end up with actually, uh, you're gonna end up with um, torque levels approximately similar to a 4x4 vehicle, which is really what we're after here. And hopefully we will weigh an awful lot less than a 4x4 vehicle. It probably does portray my lack of understanding of AC and to be honest, motors in general, a lot of the, uh, the terminology and the jargon that was going on whilst I was researching and then discussing the design for this 
is above my head. I'm doing a lot of reading at the moment to try and understand how it works, particularly because there are all sorts of wires, which I'll show you in a second, here, um, and things like hall sensors and all sorts of stuff like that, which you've got to be a motor person to understand it, and I'm just not one. I need to become at least a semi-motor person, so I understand at least how to fix things if they break. I'm never going to be designing these things from scratch, that's why I have outsourced this, but I need to understand what all the main terminology means, and yeah, if there is a minor fault, how to fix it even to the point where yeah this is a this is a dc motor but then it's got three power cables which come from the controller uh, i always thought that three was the sort of thing that you get from an ac motor so i'm even going to have to try and rationalize that uh, those of you who understand motors better than me might be able to send me on the right track uh, don't worry i am doing the reading and i will bolt the whole thing together correctly but uh, it's a bit of a learning curve um, in fact, I've put it kind of the wrong way around for you to see. Uh, the, uh, the gear motor is a helical bevel gearbox, and I gather that, that is within the realms of normality about the most efficient one you can get. You, uh, you can achieve well over 90% efficiency, and I've gone for a 90 degree turn as I feel that with the wheel um, assembly, the drivetrain coming out this way, uh, it'll mean that I can keep this in tight to the side of the vehicle and won't take up too much space inside. Uh, I think this is probably the most efficient way of doing it. Uh, it is heavy and I'm probably going to want to carry at least a spare of both these components probably for a pair of vehicles in case one of them just dies and you want to swap it out. I think most likely the chance of being able to do it in uh, transit repair of something this complicated and this closed up and sealed is is pretty much zero so I think having a, a completely brand new swapped out unit is a good idea. It was the whole thing together less than a thousand dollars and i managed to get a good deal with fedex to get it sent over if you do last minute deals with fedex if you get an account with them you can actually get deals with less than half price their normal rates and so it wasn't too awful getting this sent over in, a, in the large box let's give you a closer look here's the whole setup they are clearly catering fundamentally to western industry or at least they are used to marketing and packaging for the anglosphere Basic setup advice, useful information on the oil type, as it appears you rarely get model specific operating or workshop manuals from these companies. I'm devastated to learn, however, that if we install superpower, that the enjoyment of warranty service is withdrawn. We have been warned. The Volcano motor is as ordered. It will demand a little over 100 amps, and I'm informed with a soft start so there's no initial high current flow, but time will tell about that critical factor. There was a delay to the order being sent due to the flange to flange coupling and the keyway interlock between shaft and aperture. They were all made to IEC standard dimensions. It's solved apparently, but I've yet to hear about exactly how they did it. It's possible the rubbing to the paint that allowed the browning of the iron was through their testing and fixing efforts. This is the ESC made by Kelly Controls. They're pretty well known in the custom motor world, people making ATVs, e-bikes, that sort of thing. I've gone well over spec with the peak handling around 300 amps as I found merely matching current rating with motors to be a dangerous game with the smell of burning expensive electrics. I have to be honest, I have not a clue how to wire this up yet, but Jason at Volcano did test it. I ordered a few extras like bi-directional anti-slip, which just sounded like a good thing, a CAN bus and a USB cable to program it. The latter is missing and I'm inquiring to make sure that I wasn't accidentally given a bare unit without the extras. I wasn't expecting the little switch or rotary control, so yes, I'll report back to you. Back to the gear unit. As is standard with iron or steel engineering block housings, they do a fairly rough all over spray with paint. I doubt this will last forever, and so I may rub this back a bit and coat with a pigmented skinning epoxy resin, also perhaps in a different colour that will show up oil more clearly. I'm grateful they told me this by the way. I stipulated the orientation of the gear motor at purchase, and they filled it to the appropriate level for this flat layout. I need to check the process for oil changes, but the cover or product document is a help. This is the business end of the setup. I wondered if I'd be able to turn it, but the paint job has covered the rotating parts edges, I think at least, so it may need a load of newton meters applied properly to get it spinning, or perhaps I'm underestimating the energy needed to turn a 17 to 1 ratio gearbox. That solid output shaft with an IEC standard keyway will fit onto a constant velocity joint via a coupling yet to be decided upon then immediately exit the vehicle side through a gland and head off to power the wheel. Uh, I think that's probably at the moment. Um, that controller is going to need its whole own ep episode of me explaining my, my long path to understanding what the hell plugged into what. So I'll leave that for now. This is, this is going to be a brief one. 
But anyway, I hope that shows you that we are making progress on the non-composite side of the burner project. Cool. Cheers. Bye.